Hi, this is Dr. Jenny Hong, and I'm the Principal Investigator of the ACR Tyroids Thyroid Ultrasound Registry. If you are listening to this video, then I thank you, because you and your practice are participating in this registry. In this video, I want to give you an overview of the aims of the study, the methods and workflow, the structured reporting template, and our progress and plans. First, some background. ACR Tyroids was published in May 2017. As you know, this is a system that was developed by an ACR committee that helps determine the management of thyroid nodules seen on thyroid ultrasound. It's based on five imaging categories that place nodules into five categories of suspicion. And the management is determined by the category of suspicion as well as the nodule size. Why are we studying ACR tyroids? Well, it will help to validate the system and refine future versions of ACR tyroids. We need the evidence to gain acceptance by radiologists. And finally, there are multiple other biopsy guidelines and we would like to compare ACR tyroids to these guidelines. Over the spring of summer of 2018, we published three studies on the topic of ACR tyroids. Uh, the first study in radiology showed that there was a significant reduction in thyroid nodule biopsies and improved accuracy by using ACR tyroids. This is based on non-expert practice compared to practice where ACR tyroids was used, as well as comparing multiple biopsy guidelines to ACR tyroids. The second study showed that using a structured reporting template and a ACR tyroids system improved the quality of the ultrasound reports. And then the final study showed that there was really very large inter-observer variability for multiple findings um, that are used to determine thyroid nodule level of suspicion, but using ACR tyroids actually did reduce the variability in the management recommendations. Since then, there have been several other studies on the topic of ACR tyroids and have compared ACR tyroids to other ultrasound classification systems. And this one published in JCEM in October of 2018 showed that ACR tyroids, this is the conclusion, outperformed the others. The study published in EJE in June 2018 shows that ACR tyroids has the highest area under the ROC curve for detection of high-risk thyroid nodules. This registry study is funded by the ACR Innovation Grant. There are seven sites participating with a mix of academic and private practice radiologists and there has been further funding by Akron to support the evaluation of outcomes. The aim of the innovation grant, which is a small grant, was simply to develop the infrastructure to collect data to support a registry. The registry would initially be a research registry and eventually we could see this registry as a practice registry for quality and safety purposes. The research aims of the registry are twofold. First, we want to determine the proportion of thyroid nodules that are recommended by for biopsy by ACR tyroids compared to the other guidelines. This is very similar to the first study that was published in radiology, but this time instead of using 100 nodules, we'll use thousands of nodules from across your sites. The second aim of the study is to determine the positive predictive value of ACR tyroids compared to the other guidelines. And so for this, we need to look at outcomes and we also need to collect data on the biopsy reports as well. Here's how we'll achieve these aims. This first part is where we need you. The patient will come for a thyroid ultrasound uh, based on symptoms or an incidental nodule detected from other imaging. You will then report that thyroid ultrasound using a structured reporting template that I'll review soon. 
based on your report and uh, your recommendations of no further management, follow-up or biopsy, the patient will then go on to have a biopsy. Now, the patient may be going to have a biopsy without a recommendation for you and will include those nodules as well. The biopsy will be performed and it will be reported with another structured reporting template. Uh, and then after that, data will be collected uh, six to 12 months later uh, for the cytology results and further workup or even surgery. How will we acquire the data that you report with your structured reporting template? Well, a triad server will be installed at your site and this triad server will read the radiology reports using the structured reporting template uh, and then pass out the data and send it to the ACR data store. No one will be manually recording any of the uh, data, but it is really essential that you use the structured reporting template correctly. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going through this in the video. Here's a structured reporting template. This is for thyroid ultrasound. Uh, you can add more to the structured reporting template before and after uh, this field of text. Uh, but this is the essential data that we'll be collecting. This first part is uh, three questions, an estimation of the total number of nodules uh, that are equal or greater than a centimetre, and then two questions, the number of spongiform nodules equal to or greater than two centimetres not described below. These are tyroid one nodules and would not be biopsied under ACR tyroids, but would be biopsied under certain thyroid nodule classification systems. Then the next question is number of mixed cystic and solid nodules that are not suspicious, greater or equal to 1.5 centimeters. And this would be tyroids too. Once again, would not be biopsied with ACR tyroids no matter what size, but would be biopsied by other biopsy guidelines at the 1.5 centimeter cutoff. If we didn't have these two questions, then we would not get an accurate answer to the number of nodules that are not recommended for biopsy under ACR tyroids relative to the other biopsy criteria. Then if the nodule requires further management or follow-up, further, further biopsy or follow-up based on the size and the risk category, then you would describe it with this structured reporting template. Now these are drop-down menus, so the text is not this uh, long. Uh, but first we want your maximum size and then the other two dimensions if you wish, the location of the nodule, and then the five categories are composition, echogenicity, shape, margins, echogenic foci. If there are additional echogenic foci, then you would describe them in these other two lines because more than one echogenic foci can account for the total score. If you have no echogenic foci or just one type of echogenic foci, then you would delete these two additional lines. After that, we ask you to add up the points, uh, which puts the patient into a certain risk category. Uh, if the patient has had previous ultrasound, then you would answer whether it's change in size, change in features or risk category. And then finally, you give your recommendation of a biopsy, a follow-up ultrasound, or no further follow-up. And if there has been no previous ultrasound, then you would delete this follow-up information. Then when the patient comes for a biopsy, they you also use this structured reporting template. Uh, up to two biopsies are performed, typically. And here, uh, this line is a reference number based on prior ultrasound. So if this nodule that you're biopsying was the nodule number two based on the previous template, then you would put two here. And we added this here because we can link the biopsy template and results to the diagnostic ultrasound. And doing this means that you don't have to dictate all the features again. Uh, you give the maximum size, the location, 
and then you give the thyroid's risk category and then the reason for biopsy, which may be that it met criteria, it was indeterminate on a prior biopsy or non-diagnostic, or there was other factors, patient, referrer, or other. So the next steps uh, are to install the triad server, and then when your site is giving and sending data, we'll monitor the data and give you feedback. Uh, we'll collect this data for 12 months, so you'll be using this structured reporting template for diagnostic thyroid ultrasound and biopsy for 12 months, and then we'll collect outcomes. Now along the way, I'm here to help. I'll be regularly posting educational materials through a blog, and then the ACR Tyrats website also has additional resources. It has the publications, uh, links to three webinars that were given by myself, Franklin Tesla, who's the chair of the ACR Tyrats committee, and Dr. Bill Middleton, who is a key member of the committee as well. Uh, there's also a link to an atlas, uh, the structured reporting template that we're using, and also a sonographer's worksheet. And that is all I have to say, and I thank you again for participating on the study. I'm open to answering any questions you may have, and look out for additional resources from me. Thank you so much.